A big part of building a portfolio of real estate and multifamily properties is fundraising. I'm sure many of you out there are afraid of asking friends and family to help fund your deals for fear that it may go sideways and you'll lose all their money. So it begs the question, should you let your friends and family in on your deals? You know, I totally understand where that question would come from and fear is a very, very powerful thing. Uh, we're afraid that if our brother or sister puts down $100,000 and a deal fails, they would not only never speak to us again, uh, but they would let the rest of the family know and tell them what happened. You know, losing that same money from a lifelong friend could ruin a relationship too. That fear is something that haunts everyone and more so when it comes to money. But it all depends on how you handle that fear. When a person invests with one of my deals, I feel an immense sense of gratitude, first off, that someone has trusted me with a sizable amount of their money. You know, I also feel a great deal of responsibility to protect their capital and produce a reasonable return, you know, even more so than I do with my own money. You know, the thing is, is that I need to make sure that the deal I'm working on is so solid that the chances of it losing any money are small to non-existent. You know, my margin of error has to be great enough that it would take a total disaster to wipe out that property. And even then, there's still insurance to protect the asset anyway. You know, but with that said, the probability of losing my investor's money is, has to be remote. You know, but it all begins with being comfortable with the underwriting, you know, creating a plan of attack and selling the property to deliver the returns promised to protecting the investor's capital. That's essentially what I focus on. We all know that sometimes deals just don't work. So what do you do in that case? You know, let's go through a couple of scenarios where you've um, made some money flipping some small properties, some small houses, and uh, now you want to go a little bigger, right? Uh, say you get your hands on a rundown fourplex for $40,000. You plan on putting another $50,000 into it, and then you want to sell it for one seventy-five. dollars So you borrow the entire ninety k from your family, and then you get to work. But there's some mishaps. You know, you underestimate the construction cost by $25,000, and you can only sell the property for $125,000. You know, instead of the $85,000 profit, You've only made $10,000. That's it. Terrible disaster. So what do you do? Well, you got a couple of choices. So you can either A, you can honor your commitment to your family by making them whole on what they gave you. You know, you pay them back the principal plus the interest. You know, you maybe they feel bad for you because, um, you know, you, you took the money from your savings. But you know what? That trust that that they gave to you and you returned will go a long way. They'll still talk to you. They won't ostracize you from the family. In fact, they may even tell their friends about how you made good on your word. And then you have option B. You can let the, the nine family members that kicked up the $90,000 plus your parents that did another $25,000 know that you're going to be returning the principal but no interest and roughly $1,000 of the profit from the sale. You know, Since you at least return their principal, they'll probably still talk to you but you know they, they you didn't fulfill your promise. They will still keep in that in mind in the future, especially when you do your next deal. You know it'll take a lot more convincing. But since you made good on your track record, they may lend to you again. You just don't know. So I've looked at the best case and the worst case scenario, but there's still consideration of you know not using friends and family in the first place. You know, when you're first starting out, friends and family is usually the first place to turn to to get that financial support to nail down your first deal. This will extend beyond just your immediate people that you know, but also to their friends and their neighbors and the people that they work with. You know, if you think about it, your friends and family network is huge. If you don't leverage these people for your deals, it'll be extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible, to raise the money needed to get your deal done especially when you're starting out. You need to take money from these people if you're going to do a deal. What this means is though is overcoming that fear and ask everyone you know, friends, family, people at work, everyone to invest with you. It's that fear that's going to hold you back if you don't act and raising capital is important to getting a deal locked up. The way you overcome this fear is to get so good at the underwriting. You know, you get broker's opinions before you buy. You, you, you plan for the worst. By preparing, you're not going to be as afraid as much. You won't, be, you won't be fearful, you know. It's that preparation that really eliminates fear. 
Have you ever taken any money from friends and family? How did it go? You know, I really want to know. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're learning something from this video or from any of these videos that we've been putting out there, you know, give it a thumbs up and check out the Bulletproof Cashflow podcast on iTunes or Stitcher and subscribe to the new YouTube channel as well. You know, as, as uh, I tell you every day, you know, we're working on getting new content out to you guys. We want to help you build success in the world of multifamily. So be great and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.